Hello, welcome to the video on the order of operations. This is our fourth example set, example set D. And of course, I hope you had a chance to watch that lesson video and uh, do some practice in the other videos that we've been um, going over and hopefully you went over. But um, let's get to these particular problems. And our first problem here is to evaluate for the following values. So we have a variable expression or an algebraic expression and we want to evaluate, which means that we're going to plug in the specified value. We're going to replace the variable for the specified value and then um, basically perform, um, simplify that expression by performing, you know, uh, the order of operations. Okay, we're just going to use the order to work it down until we get one value. So let's be clear. Okay, every, everywhere we see an X, we're going to plug in a 4 and everywhere we see a Y we're going to plug in a 2 and when we do this when we evaluate you want to use uh, parentheses to do that we've talked about that in previous videos but let's go ahead and just make sure very carefully that you plug in the right number for the right uh, variable so here this is going to be a 2 this will be a 2 and this will be a 2 and right here that's going to be a 4 4 and 4 and every time you do plug in, you set your problem up, you want to always double check, okay? Double double check before you start your work because um, too often than not, students will kind of rush plugging in the numbers. They plugged it in incorrectly and then they go off and do all this wonderful work and the problem is wrong, not because the work they did was wrong, it's because the values they plugged in were incorrect. But we're not going to make that mistake. And um, Let's get going here. So we have parentheses 4 times 4 squared minus parentheses 2. Okay, I got my other parentheses. Okay, I'm just rewriting it. Be very careful. Plus 4 divided by 2 all over 4 times 2. Okay, so I'm looking here. Everything seems to be good and, and in order. So now, remember, uh, one of the grouping symbols we talked about was a fraction bar. And we can kind of separate the numerator and the denominator in our kind of like their own domain, if you will. And we'll simplify each, you know, each by itself. And then we'll, we'll put everything together in a fraction. So I'm going to concentrate on the numerator because that's where most of the work is. So now, I need to go ahead and break out my PEMDAS, my order of operations, and start working on this problem. So the first thing is parentheses, right? So this is the set of parentheses I need to work on. I need to do what's inside of that set of parentheses first. So if you haven't had a chance to try this problem on your own, I really would like it if you tried it now with me. Okay, so what do I have to do inside of this set of parentheses? Okay, well, I have to go back and refer to PEMDAS. I have to do the powers first. So this is going to be 4 times, I'm doing the 4 squared part now. Okay, that's my only set of powers or exponents. So that's going to be 4 times 16 minus 2, and parentheses, plus 4 divided by 2. Now, with experience, you could start dropping these parentheses and, be, and because, matter of fact, let's go ahead and just uh, start being acting a little more experienced here because if you, you know, if you're understanding this and you're like, okay, I got this, I'm pretty comfortable with it. At this point in time, I don't want to continue to write four times two because I know it's, you know, it's going to be eight. Um, I'm running out some of these, you know, additional steps, additional parentheses, just to make the point that I want you to use parentheses. But like I said, you know, experience, you'll be able to. Um, get more comfortable with you know writing out your next steps if you will so I'm not encouraging you to skip anything but at this point instead of writing four times two I'm just gonna go and write my eight all right but I still have a lot of work to do in my numerator so I'm still looking inside those parentheses and I have to go ahead and do the four times sixteen right because that's multiplication and that's gonna come before the subtraction operation so 4 times 16 is 64. So I have 64 minus 2 plus, now at this point, 
I don't have to write parentheses around the 4 and the 2. I can just go 4 divided by 2 because there's nothing to do inside those parentheses. Once again, I'm just writing it, I'm setting the problem up just to keep you, um, remind you that you want to always plug in using parentheses initially. And then after that, you can kind of uh, take it from there. Okay. So 64 minus 2, I still have to take care of what's inside the parentheses. I'm not done. That would be, of course, 62. So I got 62 plus 4 divided by 2 all over 8. Okay, still focused in on the numerator. So I have addition and I have division. And I have to do division first. So now I have 62 plus 4 divided by 2, which of course is 2, all over 8. And now you can see that this actually was pretty um, a nice value that we're going to get here for our answer. 62 plus 2 is 64. 64 divided by 8, of course, is 8. So that worked out nicely. But once again, look at the work. Okay, and this is the key. You're telling the story, and you're and you're telling it neatly, and you're showing the complete steps. You know, it's just like a, a book. Yeah, I guess it's just like a book or a novel. I mean, really, would you want to skip like the good parts of a book? I mean, you're like, okay, here's the beginning, here's the end. That's what you, if you just wrote down the, your answer as eight, you're not, you, you know, where's the story at? That's the best part. Okay, so all these pieces here, all these steps count, okay, for a number of different reasons. All right, let's take a look at this problem. So we want to insert grouping symbols to make the sentence true. So pretty much what you want to do is just kind of play around with this um, by inserting parentheses or brackets till you kind of make it work. So for example, you might want to try putting a set of parentheses here. You get 5 plus 18 minus 3, and uh, that's not going to get you 42. All right, so let's see here. Maybe you went like this. Put a pair of brackets there, so now you got 7 times 9. Okay, so you went 7 times 9. That's 63 minus 3. That's not going to work. All right, so the whole idea here is just to drive home the point of um, using uh, grouping symbols, okay? So how about this? Does this work? This is going to get me 7, 7 times 6. 7 times 6. And what is 7 times 6? Last I checked, that's 42. All right. So now, let's take a look at our last two problems. All right, let me try this here. I'm just kind of um, taking a stab at this. I don't even remember the exact solution, so we're kind of doing it together. So this would be 7 times 2. Oh boy, I think I might have hit it the first time out. This would be 7 times 2 plus 3. And of course I do multiplication next. So that's 14 plus 3. That's 17. All right. I like it when I'm able to just kind of whip up uh, the answer first time out. That's the way it is with math. Sometimes you're going to get it the first time. Sometimes you might have to go over a few you know, you might have to struggle a little bit, but, but that's okay. Okay, that's to be expected, as long as you don't give up. All right, last problem. So, if I go this way, put parentheses around that, that's not going to help us out, because 12 times 3, that's 36. 36 divided by 1, that's not going to get me 12. So, how about here? If I have 12 times 3 divided by 1, so that's going to be 3 divided by 1 is, of course, uh, 3. So 12, that's not going to help me out either. All right. I'm just kind of doing what we call mental math, um, where you just, you know, you're kind of, uh, you know, you're doing some of this stuff in your head just to try to figure it out. Let's see here. How about if I did this and this? Let's see what, that, what uh, we would get there. So we would get... 36 divided by 3, and 36 divided by 3, if you're just wondering, happens to be 12. All right, so it makes a difference. You can manipulate a numeric operation. All, you can get all kinds of different numbers out of it, all based upon those grouping symbols and where you plug them in. And that's the power of the grouping symbols we were talking about. Um, it's, it tells you what to do first. Okay, so we had a bunch of numbers here and operations. Now, of course, if we didn't have these, if we didn't insert these grouping symbols, 
we would have to use um, the order of operations to get our answer. Okay, but in math, when we want to be very specific about what to do first, that's why we'd like to group sets of numbers or expressions together using these symbols. And those would be those parentheses, nice little squiggly brackets, these type of brackets, and even that fraction bar we talked about can be considered a grouping symbol. All right, so keep working hard. If you're um, you know having a tough time, go back and just you know, continue to review. Okay, work through the, this weakness. I know you can. If you're um, like I said, if you're a little bit weak, but you really really want to make sure that you're confident in this before you move forward because it's such a vital skill and um, we're going to be using it all the time. Well, good luck. It was a pleasure. Bye bye.